My name is Jordan Young. I'm a track and field thrower from Canada. For over a decade, I've been working to understand every aspect of throwing. I'm an athlete, which means the only way to be great is through raw hard work and determination. This is my story. I'm going to be taking on one of athletics' biggest challenges, the Olympic Games. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of JY Throws. Super happy to be back here in Charlottesville and I can't wait to get back into my regular routine and training here. Anyway, I'm gonna start things off by climbing some stairs and give you guys a recap on what I've been up to for the last couple weeks while I was in New Zealand. And I wanna talk quickly about Matt Denny's 65 meter throw and point out some of the things that I see him doing well that have helped me improve my own technique over the last couple weeks. So before we get into what I've been working on technically for the past couple weeks, I wanna quickly take you guys back to New Zealand and show you some of the most memorable moments and throws from competition. Anyway, we're off to Wellington. We've got a meet tomorrow. It's a one-day meet. All right, we've made it to the track and it's the day of the New Zealand National Championships. We get this and then we head home. And then hopefully some big things later on this year. <laughs> they took away his banana and they numbered it. <laughs> you all coming up? Oh, let's all go. Oh, let's go. I don't think we can do it. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're going to be super hygienic on this trip home. And now I want to quickly take a look at Matt Denny's 65 meter throw from the competition in Wellington and point out a few of the things that I see him doing well that I'm trying to implement in my own technique. So one of the biggest things that I picked up in Matt Denny's throw was how well the discus and his shoulder stay connected throughout the whole throw. And you can see it starting right away in the wind. As he winds back, he's in a nice, strong, powerful position with the arm, and it just looks like it's connected to his shoulder. And as he starts to rotate, he keeps the discus working nicely around his left side out of the back. And when he lands in his power position, you can see that his throwing arm is pretty much straight off of his shoulder meaning that he's still got good connection to the discus. And from here, he can rotate all the way around, keeping the discus with his shoulder, so that as his hips are finishing, the discus is also finishing. And if that doesn't make sense, I want to compare it to my technique. And the timing's pretty subtle, so you might not notice it if you're new to throwing. But right away out of the back, as I wind back, I can already see that I don't have the same connection to my shoulder with the discus. And once I start to rotate, I leave the discus behind. So already the discus is dragging behind me. And that's going to cause a bunch of problems later on in the throw. Now you can see as soon as my left foot touches down at the front, I'm already starting to pull with my off arm. So my shoulders and off arm are facing this direction. And the discus is still dragging behind me. So as I rotate my hips to the finish, at this point I should be ready to throw. But you can see that the discus is still dragging behind me. So having a better connection with the discus and my shoulder throughout the whole throw is something that I've been working on in practice. And I'll explain more in depth how I'm doing that later on in the video. But now I want to talk about the second part of Matt Denny's throw that I want to start to incorporate into my training. And that's his off arm. So if I fast forward right to the power position and compare us next to each other, you can see the clear difference of how far ahead I'm looking with my head and how much my off arm is already pulling. So just by thinking about having a longer off arm, that can sometimes help but sometimes it also helps to have a visual cue. And this is a good example of how you can see that Matt Denny's head is still looking back towards the back of the circle, and that's gonna keep his shoulders back better, which will make it easier to keep the off arm longer, and also make it easier to have the discus more in line with your shoulder. I'm not focused on my off arm yet, I'm just trying to find the timing throughout the throw, and trying to find the connection to my shoulder with the discus. But in future practices, I definitely wanna put more emphasis on where I'm looking in the ring, and what I'm doing with my off arm. So as I was mentioning before, looking at Matt Denny's throw, you could see that on his finish, he's really well connected with the discus. So his whole finish of the throw, his arm stays nice and with his shoulder, 
and by the time he gets to the finish, his hips are turned through, his arms nice and long, and everything's squared up to the finish, and then he can just add to it and accelerate the very finish of it. And what happens to me on a lot of throws is that the discus kind of gets left behind. So as I turn and get to the finish, now my discus is so far behind, my hips are already ready to finish. So then I've got to kind of pull off the finish and start jumping, and that helps me get the discus around to the middle, but I'm losing a lot of power in my throw. So something that I've been working on for the past couple weeks is just feeling a better connection to the discus. And for me, that starts right out of the back of the circle. As I wind back, I want to think about getting the discus nice and around and already keeping it in line with my shoulder. So as I go to the middle, I still have connection with the discus. And from there, I get to a position that it feels like I can actually turn and accelerate the implement. Where if I leave the discus too far behind, get to the middle, discus is already far behind. On the finish, it's behind. And now when I try to turn, the discus is all the way back here. And I've got to pull off to get it to go straight. So starting right away with my stand throws, I want to make sure that as I'm winding back, I'm not letting the discus drop and get low or get too far behind me. I just want to kind of keep it in line with my shoulder so I can bring it around and really use my foot and feel my foot turning the discus. So if the discus gets too far behind, it feels like it's really hard to turn my hips and actually do anything with the discus. So I'm making sure it's a bit more in line. I can actually turn and keep everything working. All right, moving on to full throws, and I'm trying to think about the same cues and trying to stay connected to the discus. So what I've been really working on feeling is a lot of walkthroughs where I just kind of walk through the throw and I try to make sure that I'm keeping my arm in the right spot. And provided that it stays in the right spot, I feel nice and connected to the discus here and can rotate around all the way to the finish and be nice and square. So I've been starting off my practices by just doing a few drills, walking through the ring and really thinking about making sure that I'm keeping the discus with my shoulder out of the back I'm not leaving without the discus. So I'm winding back and sending the discus nice and rotationally around me. And that's helping keep the discus with me to the middle. The other cue that I've been really focusing on is making sure that I get over top of my right leg. The more that I make sure that I get over top of my right leg out of the back, the more balanced I feel going to the middle, the easier it is to stay connected with the discus. And when I'm nice and balanced and connected with the discus, I can actually feel the throw here and finish it. Rotational. Alright, so the throws are feeling pretty good, but on my finish, I keep feeling off balance and I'm pulling off a bit too hard to the right. So I just want to keep working wide around my right side, keeping the discus on a nice smooth orbit, just really trying to feel the connection in the middle and just trying to really work the discus straight. So one of the reasons that I need to keep doing drills is I need to keep reminding myself of the feeling of having the disc with my shoulder and going to the middle with it. It's really easy for me to leave the discus a bit too far behind and go to the middle with the discus behind me. But if I can remember the feeling of having the discus with my shoulder, then it puts me in a position that I can feel the discus here so I can actually accelerate it to the finish. So 
I make sure that I feel like I'm connected with the discus out of the back of the circle, it feels like I can kind of place the discus where I want it, and then on the finish I can place it where I want it again. So it's kind of like out of the back, I place it there, and on the finish I can place it through to the finish if that makes sense. Felt a bit too far behind, so on the finish, everything came through, and then I had to pull off. Just came out early. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. It feels so good to be back in Charlottesville, and there's nothing like sleeping in your own bed, taking a dump in your own toilet, and training at your own facilities. But thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed it, subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one.